Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Groisman with COVIDinstitute.org. And today I wanted to talk about MTHFR, kind of a funny sounding enzyme and gene, and some of the misconceptions um, with long COVID and gene, gene variants. What is MTHFR? Well, it if we break it down, it stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. That's a mouthful. Now, it is the name of the gene, and it is also the enzyme. Uh, they both have the same name. And what is its purpose? Well, it is to methylate, methylation. And what is the purpose of methylation is to be able to create a universal donor for the methyl group. And SAM is the final component of that that ends up methylating other important molecules in your body. So we talked about methylation. What is methylation? Well, it's a process by which you pass a methyl group from folate to homocysteine back to methionine. Methionine is an essential amino acid, which means your body cannot make it. You have to either get it from supplements or from food. So methionine is what serves as the precursor to SAM. It starts with methylated folate. So back in the day, companies decided to supplement folic acid uh, to try to prevent things like um, neural tube defects, um, such as spina bifida uh, in, uh, in babies. So they added to grains, to cereals, things like that. They've added folic acid, which is an unmethylated folate. So it needs to be activated. So one function of the MTHFR is to methylate the folate and make it active. What is methylation and what, what is it all about? Methylation involves one carbon met metabolism. It's important um, for the synthesis of DNA, for DNA repair, for amino acid uh, synthesis, for creatinine synthesis, and for phospholipids, which are used in cell membranes. This is a pretty important process, one of the most important processes we have. This happens where? In mitochondria. What do you need to methylate? Well, you need quite a few things. You need B2, which is riboflavin. You need B6. You need B9, which is folate, um, which is what's going to be methylated, and B12. You also need to activate B12 because guess what? Um, just like um, with folate, when it's added to, to foods as a supplement, it's often unmethylated. And to methylate uh, B12, you need two additional enzymes, which are called MTR and MTRR. And you need to activate B6. Um, which is often done with niacin. That's where the B3 comes from. Unfortunately, uh, with long COVID, a lot of these vitamins are malabsorbed. In other words, you may take them in either through supplements or through food, but they just pass right through and um, don't really get absorbed. And this is due to uh, gut dysbiosis. So this is really strike one for long COVID. Strike two is that methylation happens inside mitochondria, as I said. So you need a working mitochondria unit, uh, mitochondria, mitochondrial. Um, if there's a dysfunction, you will not be able to methylate. What else does this process do? Well, methylation eventually produces glutathione from homocysteine. And this is strike three for long COVID. Glutathione is very, very important as a, as a reduction of cellular stress. It again works in the mitochondria and uh, its purpose is to get rid of reactive oxygen species. Strike number four, 
you need methylation to metabolize histamine. If you can't methylate properly, histamine can accumulate. What else does it do? Well, homocysteine. Um, if you're not methylating, a, homocysteine can start to accumulate in your blood, and this can lead to a lot of problems. It's been linked to formation of POTS and MCAS. Again, strike five. It is toxic to endothelium and can lead to high risk for clots. It can induce vasoconstriction. It can cause issues with sympathetic nervous system stimulation. And it can cause increased blood pressure. So without activated folate, your body must use other methods to try to methylate. And one alternative pathway is to use choline. Um, And if it's using choline for this, then it is not available for acetylcholine synthesis, which is a very important uh, pro, um, parasympathetic nervous system neurotransmitter. What else is methylation important for? DNA. Not only does it help make DNA but it also helps repair it. And it's very important to turn off certain genes. If this does not happen, some genes remain on. And in, in, the, in instances of oncogenes, for instance, uh, there's a chance of cancer formation. Let's talk about homozygous versus heterozygous because this kind of goes into the MTHFR um, and how it works. So everybody has two copies of the gene. If you're homozygous, that means that you've inherited the same version of the gene from both your mother and your father. If you're heterozygous, you've inherited two different versions. Uh, again, one from your mother and one from your father. So you need functional MTHFR, MTR, MTTR genes to be able to process methionine. What's interesting though is, is that the most common mutations are usually clinically insignificant in the normal population, people without long COVID. The normal, the normal or wild alleles as we call it, are homozygous 677CC and that means for cytosine. That's the normal spot of 677 in the sequence and 1298AA or adenosine or adenine, sorry. Um, the most common polymorphism or change or mutation, however you wanna look at it, is 677. The cytosine becomes a thymine, a T, and it's homozygous, okay? Uh, in this particular case, it will cause a homocysteine increase or homocysteinemia. There's, however, um, none to a small increase in clots despite this increase. Um, the average folate concentration in the blood drops by about 16% compared to the wild. You can still process all folate, including folic acid. Because homocysteine does increase, however, it is important in long COVID because we also have problems absorbing the B vitamins. However, in this one in particular, the 677TT homozygous, a B2 or a riboflavin can be used to treat this. For the other ones, this, the, what we call the heterozygous, where only one of the genes has the polymorphism, there's usually no homocysteine increase and no increase in the risk of clots. The 1298 um, cytosine homozygous again, does not cause increased homocysteine levels and really no significant changes in folate levels. However, if you happen to inherit both the 1298 heterozygous AC or and 677 
TC heterozygous. This becomes compound heterozygous, and it basically works the same as the original 677TT homozygous, and you do see increased homocysteine levels. This is basically the big picture here. The methylation part that happens starts with the methylated folate or starts with the folic acid that becomes methylated by MTHFR. The green part of the, of the graph shows that choline can, can be used as an alternate if there's a problem with the methylation from the folate. So how do you fix all this? Well, you can just take methylated folate. It's that simple. Um, so here's where we can see where B2 is used, B6 and B12 in the process of methylating the folate, then passing it to methionine, which then becomes SAM. And the SAM is used to donate the methyl groups to DNA. What about B12? Well, as I said, you, you need two enzymes um, to basically activate B12. Um, one is MTRR and the other one is MTR. Deficiency can, can happen due to absorption or diet. It's one of the more common deficiencies of B vitamins. Uh, we can look at homocysteine and we can also look at um, MMA levels in the, in the blood to see if um, you have a deficiency of B12. There is one common mutation in MTR in that enzyme and gene uh, that can lead to homocysteine accumulation. However, it is very rare to see elevated B12 levels in the blood and, and due to um, uh, its elimination from kidneys, um, if you do have increased or elevated B12 levels, it can be pathologic and needs a workup. This particular gene has 2,200 bases. Um, and again, we're talking about this mutation or two common mutations that we see. Um, one is the 677C uh, to T mutation, and the other is the 1298A to C mutation. Uh, we've already discussed kind of what they mean and what they cause. However, how often do these occur? Well. 60 to 70 percent of people have at least one of these variants. Uh, heterozygous, which will be one of these uh, 677CT or, um, or reversed, uh, 1298CA or reversed. And again, there will be no homocysteine increase if, it, if you just have one of the genes um, that's heterozygous. If you have homozygous, which means both genes are affected. Uh, it's about 8.5% uh, between both of them. That would be the 677TT or 1298CC. And again, the 677TT is the one that can increase homocysteine levels, not the 1298CC. 10% of the population will be either homozygous or compound heterozygous for these two polymorphism. And again, it will increase homocysteine levels in both cases, if you're if you're homozygous for 677TT or your compound heterozygous for each of the two mutations, you have both of them for the heterozygous one. So 2.2.5%, you would have um, the compound heterozygous. That means you'll have the 677 one gene and then the 1298 one gene, both of them being heterozygous, not homozygous. So bottom line, do you need to worry about if you have the MTHFR variant? Well, in most cases, the big answer is maybe. Normally, you don't need to worry about folic acid versus methylated folate with the two most common variants. Why? Because blood levels of folate um, 
are only affected by about 16%, even, even with the homozygous 677cc. You can process all types of folate, including folic acid. However, however, in long COVID, again, it's different. If you're pregnant, it's different. You will need to supplement folic acid if you're pregnant. Why? Because so far, it's really the only, the only folate form that's been shown to reduce neural tube defects, um, not methylated folate, interestingly enough. There are other rare mutations, um, but the majority uh, that are out there and that are tested are going to be the 677C2C to T and the 1298A to C. If you have one of these rare mutations, not the two I just mentioned, and you have homocysteuria, you would be symptomatic very early in life and it should be caught early in life and treated. Homocysteuria is rare and it's very serious inherited condition. Um, it means that your body can't process methionine at all. This is not what we see mostly in long COVID. You can check to see if there's a problem by looking at homocysteine levels and vitamin deficiencies. You do not need to get genetic testing. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed um, this explanation of MTHFR. I hope I was clear. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.